All right, I guess we'll get started. It's 12 o'clock, and I know um, we like to try to get this moving on time for our web audience out there. Um, make sure my uh, microphone, yep. So um, welcome to the September user group. Um, and today's topic is going to be the PowerFlex 6000 medium voltage drives. And we'll um, turn over to our guest speaker in just a moment. But uh, uh, we always have our you know, couple of introduction slides, kind of tell you what's going on and what's coming up. Um, so, uh, so at the moment, we're um, coming to the end of the year. Uh, believe it or not, October is next week. So we really only have two, two topics left for the year. Um, next month will be smart safety for machines. So we'll talk about the, um, some of the, uh, you know, the, the machine safety stuff, like the guard logics, all the red stuff uh, that Rockwell sells and how that all kind of comes together. And then November, we're, we'll take a little break um, for Automation Fair up in Chicago. And then, uh, and then we'll come back in December, just kind of talk about what, what, the, uh, what was kind of the, the hot stuff at the, at, the share, at, the, at the Automation Fair this year, and then kind of what's coming up in 2020. Um, and we are working on dates. Um, I've got a lot of working dates set for 2020, and we'll start putting some topics in there for next year too. So we'll, we'll, keep, on, uh, we'll keep on doing this into the new year. Um, so today's topic we said was PowerFlex the 6000, which is the a medium voltage drive. And uh, I like to kind of highlight sometimes too, when we go back, uh, look at our archive of things that we've had done over the last couple of years. And uh, ironically, we've done them both in August. We should have done this one in August too, to keep the, the track, good, <laughs> to keep the, 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 the thing going there. But so uh, August of last year, we did a, just a, a general intro to variable frequency drives, which was a, a good intro type session. And then Going back a couple years, we did a uh, kind of what's new with the low voltage MCCs, and that even included the, the L, low voltage and medium voltage drives as well. So we got some archived items back there. You're welcome to, to go and look if you want to learn more about the drives and the, and the, and the over the, 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 the larger PowerFlex um, drive family. Um, and uh, kind of last bit of business here is, of course, Automation Fair is going to be happening in uh, less than two months now. So November 20th and 21st, it's in Chicago. So uh, we invite everybody who's listening today to, to come on up to Chicago and attend this show. If you're not familiar with the Automation Fair, um, go to automationfair.com, talk to your uh, Reynolds account managers, your Rockwell folks, and we'll tell you all about the show. It's definitely um, worth going up to Chicago to see this event. And with that, I'm gonna introduce uh, Brad. So Brad, uh, I. Uh, I uh, stole your picture off online, but uh, Brad uh, Bujardini, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and Brad's out of, uh, you're out of Canada, right, Brad? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so Brad's with Rockwell Automation and he's the product manager for the, um, the medium voltage drives or the PowerFlex 6000 drive. So uh, I'm gonna let um, Brad kind of take control of, of the show here. So I'm gonna let him, uh, Grab a, yep, grab a can, uh, let me know when you can see my screen. Yep, we've got it. All right, and if I if I do this, can you still let me just see? Just trying to share my full screen here. You see that okay? Yes, got full screen. That looks good. All right. Are you seeing this box in the middle? Please move this window away or <laughs> Yes. No. Yeah, we got that. We see the yellow box. Yep. I'm not sure what that is. Please move this window away from the shared application. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I can get rid of that. Um, yeah. All right. It's like it's, I'm just, just going to go. Yeah. It's going away now. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll work through it. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for joining the call. So, again, Thanks, Wayne, for the introduction. My name is Brad Bujardini. I'm the product manager for the PowerFlex 6000 uh, medium voltage drive. So I wanted to talk to you today about um, specifically our reduced footprint launch with the PowerFlex 6000 that we uh, recently launched um, back at the beginning of August. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through that 6000 at a high level and then kind of the, the reduced footprint launch. So we're gonna talk about the design overview, um, technical overview and then commercial overview of this reduced footprint PowerFlex 6000 launch. 
Okay, so when we talk about um, the medium voltage drives market, it's really segmented into um, two variants. We have the general, we have general purpose applications, and those are applications such as fans, pumps, and compressors. Um, these applications make up 80% of the medium voltage drives market. These applications are generally um, lower risk. Um, you know, I, mo most customers have fans, pumps, or compressors in their plants. Um, it's a common application. Um, most competitors can can apply drive to this type of application. The remaining 20% of the medium voltage market uh, we call special purpose applications. So these are applications that could require things like um, regeneration, zero speed holding torque, uh, maybe extremely long motor cable lengths, um, those sorts of things. So examples of those types of applications are cranes and hoists, conveyors, sagging ball mills, extruders and mixers. So this is how we, we look at the medium voltage drives market and how it's segmented. Um, and when we look at the, when we look at the PowerFlex 6000, um, that fits into our general purpose um, segment. So we have two drives um, from Rockwell Automation for the medium voltage market space. We have the PowerFlex 6000 and the PowerFlex 7000. So the PowerFlex 6000 serves the general purpose market space and the PowerFlex 7000 serves the special purpose market space. So when we look at the uh, when we look at the um, the reduced footprint PowerFlex 6000, so um, it's it's the same topology. So for those of you that aren't aware, the PowerFlex 6000 is a cascaded H bridge voltage source inverter uh, type drive. So basically, in the market, there's VSI and CSI type drives, and within VSI, there's a um, number of different topologies, and cascaded H bridge is one of them. And that just speaks to the way that uh, the the, the converter devices are connected uh, within the drive and what components we use. Um, so, you know, with the reduced footprint launch, we're able to redesign the drive to fit into a much small, smaller space. And I'll speak to, you know, how much we were able to save. Um, but when we look at the, the reduced footprint design, um, we are best in class globally up to four, or 70 amps at 4160 and up to 61 amps at 3300 volts um, and extremely competitive size throughout the entire um, redesigned range, which goes up to 215 amps. So obviously one of the large advantages um, to having a small footprint specifically in, in medium voltage drives comes around, you know, package control house costs and design. Um, you know, the smaller that, that you're able to design that house, the more you're able to save um, in terms of cost uh, on, on projects. Um, the footprints, the requirements for cooling, all of that will come into play and, and provide cost benefits. Um, you know, even for retrofit applications where maybe a customer would be taking out an old drive and replacing it with a new one, um, depending on the footprint of the old drive, it's not always easy to fit into that existing space. You know, with this redesign footprint, we're confident the drive will be able to fit into any uh, just about any retrofit opportunity um, given the, the footprint of the drive. Okay, so when we talk about the transformation, um, the drive on the left is is what we had at this same offering. So, you know, just to, to give you a high level, the offering is 2.4 to 4160 volts, zero to 215 amps. So the drive before was 149 inches wide, and we were able to reduce it down to 48 inches wide. Um, we were also able to cut off some of the depth from 54 inches down to 49 inches deep. So obviously it's a very substantial transformation that we were able to, to make. And I'm going to walk through a bit of that design and how we we're able to do it. So starting with the inline design. So um, this, this design does still exist today. It uh, covers above 215 amps. So basically we have what we call an A-frame and a B-frame design. The A-frame is the reduced footprint version, which I'm walking through today. Um, and we call that an all-in-one design. And I'll explain the, that why on the next slide. The B-frame is what we call an inline design. And the reason it's called that is because you, you essentially have your transformer cabinet here on the left in line with your power cell cabinet on the right. And, you know, 
so that's why it's called an inline design. So to walk you through the Cascade H-Bridge design, every 6,000 drive has a transformer on the front end. <coughs> Excuse me. The transformer serves as uh, multi-purpose. It can step up or down the voltage. Um, that's one of the main advantage or one of the advantages of having the transformer there. So, you know, if a customer has a high voltage primary such as 13.8 kV, 12.47 kV, we're able to take that directly into the drive, step it down to whatever the motor voltage is. In this case, this is a 2.4 or 3.3 kV drive, and then we would be able to put that at voltage out to the motor. Um, the, the main benefit of the transformer, it's a phase shifted or phase shifting isolation transformer. So there are multiple secondary windings, which you see here labeled C, and they are all phase shifted. So that helps with harmonic mitigation um, going into, uh, into the drive. So the, the 6000 meets IEEE 519 in all cases um, for line side harmonics. Okay, so so I, in terms of power flow, you know, the, the cables would come in either top or bottom, land on the assembly, and then going through the secondary windings, all of these cables go then into what we call a power cell. So when you look at these power cells labeled D, E, and F, that's each phase. So you have phase A, B, and C here. And essentially, the way we, we can look at these power cells is as a low voltage drive. So every power cell has a diode rectifier a capacitor dc bus and an igbt inverter and that circuit is within each power cell each power cell is rated for approximately 690 volts and what we do is the incoming cables from the secondary windings come into the transformer and then the output of the of the first power cell is cascaded into the next one and so on and so forth so each power cell is cascaded into each other hence the name cascaded H-bridge. And if you were to take the line-to-line -line voltage between D and E on this last power cell, in this case, it would be 3,300 volts. Um, so the last power cell, the cable from the power cell goes back out to the motor terminal assembly, which is labeled G, and then that goes out back to your motor. So in, in you know, overall, the cascade H-bridge design is a very modular design. It's very simple to understand. Um, it's, it's not very complicated in terms of components. Replacing the power cells takes about 15 minutes to replace, so it's pretty simple. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a perfect topology for what we're serving with the general purpose market. And then here on your right is our control cabinet. So this is really the brains of the drive. Um, we have a UPS um, for, for automatic ride through that we include as standard in the drive. Um, and then your control relays for fan control and that sort of thing. And then the other two things to mention, H here is our voltage sensing board, which measures the voltage, and these blue current sensors are measuring the current. So this is what we call an inline design. We still offer this above 215 amps, and the reason being is when you when you look at the, the A-frame design, um, the transformer we move to the bottom, you can only do that up to a certain power rating and eventually that transformer gets too big to keep in the bottom and be able to cool properly. So you have to go to what we call an inline design. So the inline design is our B frame and what we have as our all in one design is our A frame. <coughs> Excuse me. So just to walk you through it. So we call it an all in one design. I mean, obviously it's, it's all in one cabinet. So what we were able to do was for these smaller power ratings, move the transformer to the bottom of the cabinet and the power cells to the top of top right of the cabinet and the control on the top left. So we're able to get all three sections in one cabinet rather than um, putting them in series and, and having, you know, extra space available that we're not really using. So it's a very compact design. Um, one other, so, so some of the, besides, you know, reshifting the components to be able to reduce the footprint, we also redesigned the power cell so it's the exact same components but we move them around um, to optimize the space we're using within the power cell circuit so the power cells are much smaller than what they used to be at these ratings which also helped us to reduce the footprint and the third thing we did was the transformer here <clears throat> normally when you're looking at the transformer you would see the phases within the transformer or the coils going from left to right 
A, B, and C. But in this case, um, because the depth was actually smaller than the width, we turned the transformer 90 degrees, so the phases actually go from front to back A, B, C. So those were the changes we were able to make to be able to reduce the footprint so drastically like we did. Um, but all the components in terms of what, what goes where and how it works is all the exact same. So your line cable connections for bottom entry would be here where it's labeled A. Um, and your motor terminal, terminal assembly where they're going out to the motor which labeled G would be just below it. So that would be for bottom entry, for top entry. I'll show you a separate slide as to where we land the cables for that because it's in behind this control cabinet here. Um, so again, the power flow is the same with the cables coming in, um, connecting to the transformer, which is B here. And then those transformer secondary windings connect into all of the power cells. You have your three phases, D, E, and F. This is a 4160 volt example, so there's four power cells per phase. Um, and then th those go back to terminal G, uh, which go back out to your motor. And then, sorry about this item that's kind of in the way here, but uh, behind here is your control cabinet. And again, it's the same components. We have the UPS that we supply as standard. And again, this is essentially the brains of the drive. A lot of advantages to going to an all-in-one design. Um, number one, it's all one shipping split. So when the drive arrives at site, um, there's no connections that need to be made between the two cabinets. It's all done. <clears throat> the secondary windings of the transformer are already connected to the power cells, so you're saving time on commissioning. Um, and with this design, there's no rear access required, so everything is front, acce front accessible um, for maintenance and troubleshooting purposes. Okay, so talking about installation um, in terms of site placement. so. We, we have um, options for either top lifting or bottom lifting when we're bringing the drive to site. Um, for top lifting, we, we include lifting bars, which is an, a new option we introduced. Um, so the lifting bars would go through the bottom of the drive and it would be lifted through the top. So a rigging company or the customer, depending on their comfort level with it, um, would be able to, would, 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 we would provide the lifting bars and they would provide the rig setup, um, assuming they had an overhead hoist to be able to lift the drive from the top, or if they wanted to lift it from the bottom, most of these drives um, in the, within the A-frame design are below 10,000 pounds, so you could potentially lift it with a forklift, and we have standard forklift openings in the bottom if that's how uh, we needed to have the drive placed at site. Okay, so just detail around um, bottom cable entry and exit and top, so I kind of explained the bottom here. Um, you have your line cable assembly with the standoffs and your motor cable assemblies, um, which are, and then there's a red sec, this red barrier here provides um, isolation between the transformer and the cables. And here is a floor plan so you can see where the entry would be for the, the line and motor cables coming in, which is this red square here labeled H and G, and then F would be your opening for the control cables. So for top entry and exit, it's a little bit of a different story. So this, this is the side of the drive that I'm showing here. So if I go back a couple slides, um, if you look at the control cabinet here, it's behind this section that I'm showing. Um, so you have two options for top, or, top entry or exit. You are able to make these connections from the top. There's a cutout at the top that that we can remove and it's about eight to nine inches down that you would reach to connect those cables. So you'd be able to, to reach down and connect those cables. However, we do also have a design for if you did have side access available, say you weren't putting the drive up against the wall or beside another drive, you could remove the side plate and connect them that way. But the connection is the same. There's the line and load motor or line and load um, terminal assemblies. Um, which connect to the transformer and power cells the same way. And you can see here from the top um, where the cutout is for the line and low cables and the control cables. Okay, so when you look at the all-in-one reduced footprint A-frame design that we're calling it, um, there's three frames within the A-frame um, and it's broken up by current rating. So for, again, from 2.4 to 4160 volts, um, we have three frames. We have zero to 70 amps, 
70 to 140 and 140 to 215. So the 70 amp drive is to be exact 47.6 inches wide, uh, 49 inches deep. And the, so the height of the drive is, is the same across all three frames without the fan, it's 91 inches. When you add the top fan, um, the, the A2 and A3 frame are slightly higher. So the, the A1 frame is 110 inches high and then the A2 and A3 frames are, slight, are three inches higher at 113 inches high. Um, but again, you can see the reduction we were able to make from the existing version. So reducing by um, this up to 70 amps by 101 inches, reducing the 140 amp frame by 86 inches, and reducing the 215 amp frame by 106 inches. Okay, so one of the options we have is re a redundant fan. So, you know, um, we have the main cooling fan, um, which we show here at the top. And one thing I didn't really mention was the, the cooling, um, how it works. You might have been wondering that when you're looking at it, so I'll quickly speak to that. Um, behind these power cells is a barrier that separates um, the airflow for the transformer and the power cell. So essentially there's two different cooling paths for the transformer and the power cell. So this fan is pulling air up from, from the heat that's coming in um, off of the transformer through the back, uh, the back duct, which goes up through the fan and out of the drive. And then, it's, and then there's a barrier which separates the power cells and then the fan is also pulling air from the front half of that barrier where the heat is being generated from the power cells and it's also being removed from the drive. So all the heat is removed with one um, pretty heavy duty fan. It's an eco fan that we use. Um, and, and we do also offer a redundant fan option with that design. So um, should the main cooling fan fail, um, we have an extra fan that we add on on the drive and the, drive, the fan automatically switches over so that the drive continues to run without um, tripping offline. So for frame A1 and A2, um, we add 200 millimeters when we add redundant fan because we add a mixing box that goes um, underneath the redundant fan. And for frame A3, the height remains the same. So you can see where the redundant fan goes um, for the first two frames, it goes in front of the main fan, and for the third frame, it actually goes beside. Brad, we had a question back on the cable entry. Um, um, yeah. It, there was a, an option for line on, you know, line side on the top entry and maybe low side on the bottom entry. Um, yeah, that's, that's available. That's available. So we can do any combination of top incoming bottom exit or bottom incoming top exit. Um, these, these terminal assemblies that you see are there on every drive. So, you know, um, as long as we get it right at, at order entry, um, we, we can, the, the design doesn't really change. I mean, the, the path for the cables will change slightly, but those, those standoffs and terminal assemblies are there regardless. So we can support any combination of those. Were there any other questions uh, before we move to the next section? Uh, I think that was it, uh, but feel free to chat in a question if you got any. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Okay, so when we look at the power ratings um, of the A-frame drive, so we, we do have both normal duty and heavy duty available. So normal duty um, is complete with 110% overload for one minute every 10 minutes and heavy duty 150% overload for one minute every 10 minutes. The normal duty drive provides 100% starting torque um, and the heavy duty drive provides 125% starting torque. Now, most of the time, since this drive is designed for general purpose applications, you know, it's going on fans, pumps, compressors, um, you know, it really depends on the application. You know, we, we do, we're not really talking about this today, but we do have synchronous transfer with the PowerFlex 6000. So a lot of times we're starting compressors unloaded, um, soft starting them, then transferring them across the line. Um, but, you know, for a large ID fan application, you, you could potentially need long, um, more than 100% starting torque if it was a cold start. It really depends on the application, but we can cover both with either a normal duty or heavy duty drive. So the normal duty drive goes up to 215 amps, 
which equates to um, approximately 1,600 horsepower at 4160, which is most likely the voltage most of you are dealing with here in North America. And the heavy duty drive goes up to 160 amps in the A-frame design, and that goes up to approximately 1,200 horsepower at heavy duty. Okay, so when you look at the specifications, um, some of it might be a little hard to see because of that screen here, but again, variable torque or constant torque, non-regen applications is really the target segment for the Parkflex 6000, standalone or synchronous transfer. Um, again, so I mentioned we can do synchronous transfer. Worth mentioning that we can do it either open or closed transition. Um, so closed transition, we would add an output reactor, uh, which we've never really been able to do before with our medium voltage drives. And now we can, so that's pretty exciting. Um, the voltage rating of the 6000 goes up to 11 kV, but this A-frame for phase one launch goes up to 4160. We're getting ready to work on phase two, which will take us up to 7.2 kV um, in this all-in-one design. But the first phase that we just launched was up to 4160 volts. The motor current rating of the 6000 goes up to 680 amps, but for this A-frame up to 215 amps. Um, some other things to point out, you know, motor cable length. So the drive, uh, we can do up to 600 meter motor cable distance without having to add any um, output DVD-T filter. If we wanted to add a DVD-T filter, we can go up to a maximum of two kilometers or 2,000 meters with the filter. Um, in terms of rectifier pulse numbers, anywhere from 18 to 54 pulse, 4160, you would be looking at a 24 pulse input. That's standard with the Pyroflex 6000. Um, inverter, we use IGBTs, the rectifiers, diodes. Um, one thing to point out, which I don't think we have on here, we do have surge arresters as standard in the design. Um, some of our competitors need to add cabinets or extra space in order to fit surge arresters within their compact designs. We have included them as standard based on the, the feedback we've got from the field and customers on you know their preference for having surge arresters on their medium voltage drives. In terms of efficiency, um, for the smallest ratings, uh, 373 kilowatt and below, so that's about 450 um, horsepower and below, it's, the drive is 96% efficiency and above that, 96.5% efficiency. Um, noise level, for the A-frame, we were able to get down to 80 dBA. We used to be at 85 across the board with our products, so now the A-frame is down to 80 dB. Um, and above that, up to 85. Um, communication protocols all stay the same. Obviously, we can support Ethernet IP, um, but we can support all the other typical communication protocols, Modbus, Modbus RTU, Profibus, um, and, and the rest. Uh, another important thing to point out, the design MTBF of the drive is 100,000 hours. That's one of the highest MTBFs in the industry for Cascaded H-Bridge. Um, there's a couple of different reasons for that. Number one goes to the component selection during the design phase. You know, we always look to source um, and, and select components with the highest reliability. It's also, it also speaks to our design uh, margins and guidelines. So, you know, where some, some competitors may want to push the brink a little bit more on thermal sizing, you know, for example, um, we tend to stay um, a little more conservative, which increases the reliability of the drive, um, you know, allowing enough margin for thermal, thermal margins for cooling of the power cells and of the transformer um, without pushing the limit too much, you know, having that line between an optimized design but a reliable design, because we do understand reliability is very important, um, that, that equates to 100,000 hour MTBF. And the design, you know, meets all your typical designs, NEMA, um, UL, IEC, uh, all the global designs. There was a question. Any more here questions? Yeah, actually there, yep. um, two, one was on the, um, kind of on that MTBF statement, I guess, was, um, were there any components, being the reduced footprint, you know, are there any components that cannot be removed without having to return the unit to the factory, or I guess, or how do you service the drive? Uh, was one question. Yeah, so, so it might be easier if I pull up a picture so you can look at it, just give you a visual. There's not many slides, I'm going back here. So, you know, um, 
The, the, within uh, each bridge drive, I mean, the power cell is probably going to be what you would replace um, most commonly. So, you know, depending on the ambient temperature you're running at, um, will depend on the life of that power cell. But um, anywhere we, we, in terms of maintenance, we recommend the power cell be replaced every seven to nine years, depending on the ambient temperature that you're running the drive at. When you do replace that power cell or those power cells, um, you just replace the whole power cell. So in the event of a power cell failure, um, you would just remove the power cell, replace it with another one, and then it can be shipped back to Rockwell for uh, refurbishment so it can be uh, reused again. Um, you know, we wouldn't be tearing up open that power cell at site and trying to fix it. We would just replace it with a new power cell altogether. And again, that takes about 15 minutes. Um, transformer, which is very unlikely to fail. Um, you know, transformer probably has the highest reliability of everything in the drive. Um, you, you would have to replace the entire unit depending on what the issue was, unless it was able to be fixed. And then the only other item would be, you know, control components like relays um or control boards and again that would just be replaced all as is so you're not really doing much um troubleshooting maintenance work within the components on site you would just replace the, the component get back up and running again um and send it off for repair does that answer the question i believe so um and then uh one other one was uh, on the cable entry again was uh about power cables uh, can they be installed uh, from the front without side access? Yes. Uh, oh, for, for, well, for top entry, no. Um, for bottom entry and exit, yes. So for top entry or exit, um, you would require top or side access, but we know there's not always side access, so it's mainly been designed for top access. For bottom entry or exit, it's front access. Um, thanks. That, that's all we got for the moment. Okay. And then I don't think we talked about um, cell bypass. You know, I was talking about the power cells in the event of a failure. We do have an option called um, automatic cell bypass. So essentially, it's, a, it's an option in the drive uh, that we can add an extra circuit within every power cell. And what it does is if there is a power cell failure or fault, um, doesn't even have to be a failure, it can just be a fault. Um, the drive is able to bypass that power cell along with the two corresponding power cells in the other two phases, which allows the drive to remain running at re um, reduced capacity. Um, we, we, we bypass the other two corresponding power cells to allow the drive to run in a balanced state between all three phases. And, and what this does is rather than a power cell fault forcing the drive to trip um, and require, you know, human intervention. Um, the drive is able to bypass the power cells. The drive remains running. It would um, enunciate the, the issue and what power cell it is, but what it does is it buys the customer um, time to plan for a shutdown um, where they can replace that power cell if need be, rather than being forced into a shutdown situation and having to replace that power cell on the spot. So that is an option we have available with the PowerFlex 6000. <coughs> Excuse me. So when we look at um, commercial overview in terms of footprint at 4160, um, the 6,000 here is the red line. It's very hard to see up to 70 amps because basically um, between the 6,000, um, Siemens and Toshiba, they're all basically neck and neck beside each other. The 6,000 is about an inch to, to half an inch smaller than the competitors um, in that rating. Um, and then the remaining, so 70 to 140, um, the top three players you basically have are Toshiba, Siemens, and Rockwell. And then from the highest frame, 140, it's basically Rockwell and Siemens. Um, but when you look at an overview, you know, uh, the, this PowerFlex 6000 drive is one of the most competitive throughout this 0 to 215 amp footprint range when you look at all the different uh, MV vendors. So one one exciting thing to talk about um, we are that we introduced or are, are getting ready to introduce with this launch is a stock program for the A-frame drive. So we're working now. Um, we're actually putting the the drives on order um, to build within the next one to two weeks. 
So we're, we're expecting to have this stock program up and ready to go around December timeframe. So Q1 of FY20. Um, and, you know, we're, we're basically stocking um, all three frames, the A1, the A2, the A3, and we're going to be stocking multiple quantities of each frame. In terms of option set, you know, we did a lot of vo voice of customers talking um, with different regions uh, within North America around what are the common options you select with the 6,000, what are the requirements. So it, it's a pretty fully loaded drive, I would say, that we're going to be stocking. Uh, one of the benefits of a Cascadia H-Bridge is you have flexibility in terms of drive current rating to motor current rating. So, you know, you don't have to be very tightly um, sized together. So you could have a 80 amp drive and we could, or 80 amp motor and we could apply our 140 amp drive onto that motor without any issues. Um, so it's going to give us a lot of flexibility and help us um, help our customers out, you know, in terms of if there's ever breakdown situations or it doesn't even necessarily have to be a breakdown, but there could be a very fast turnaround time required, you know, it could be a, they need to drive in six to seven weeks, um, having the drives in stock fully loaded, you know, if there's any potential changes that need to happen via C mods or custom modifications, we can look at doing that in the Cambridge plant or at site during commissioning. Um, but, but it's a, it's, it's it's a definite definite benefit for us to help be able to help our customers out, and we're looking to have that fully up and running um, around December timeframe. So stay tuned for more information on that when we launch that. Okay, so you know in terms of drive options across the product line um, that we have from zero to six eighty amps. So we have the Eco um, Design main cooling fans. So these are high efficiency fans which help contribute to the overall high efficiency of the drive. Um, we have our optional DVD-T filter for motor cable distances greater than 600 meters. Um, cell bypass, which I've, I've already explained. Um, another benefit is that with, when we do add that additional circuit in each power cell for cell bypass, the footprint does not grow, so the power cell size remains the same, meaning the drive size remains the same. Um, that's not the case. For all um, other competitors that, that may be offering an option similar to that, they might have to grow in size. Um, IP42 enclosure, um, you know, in addition to our NEMA 1, IP31 enclosure for more harsh environments. We also introduced a seismic rated enclosure um, for seismic zones within North America or, you know, obviously other regions like Latin America as well. And then redundant fan, which we talked about as well with automatic switchover. Okay, so in terms of quotation tools, um, for those of you, you know, that quote internally, we have power, it's available in Power One, but for customers, you know, OEMs, integrators that, that might want to be able to work up a quick quote, um, we do also have this PowerFlex 6000 available in Proposal Works um, as of July. So if you update your machine, you know, you should be able to access the PowerFlex 6000 um, A-frame drive. So. In terms of medium voltage, you know, what we what we basically state is, you know, any quote you work up within Proposal Works is going to be considered the budgetary quote, um, but it gives you an idea of what the options are, what what budgetary pricing you might might see um, along with um, dimensions and that sort of stuff. So it's a quick way of being able to access it if you need to get pull some of that information. So tools, you know, we have. Um, a lot of, of different different commercial collateral available between internal and external presentations. We have our medium voltage drive selection guide, um, which is, is really good to understand the entire uh, PowerFlex medium voltage portfolio um, and, you know, details on options and footprints and weights and that sort of stuff. Um, we have procurement specifications um, for um, SIs and engineering engineering firms who are writing specifications that want to be able to pull different things um, from the PowerFlex 6000. We have that available in Word documents. We have a launch FAQ, um, airflow requirements, a lot of a lot of different commercial um, information available to you, and available at AFC. Which so AFC and OOE just to give you definition. OOE means open for order entry, which we've already reached early August. 
AFC means available for customers, so that's the earliest date we can ship it. Our AFC date for this reducible print drive is um, September 30th, so about four or five days, business days away, I believe. Um, we've got a, a whole bunch of drives here in Cambridge that we're actually getting ready to ship out. Um, so it's a really exciting time right now. And, you know, at that time, all the user manuals, they're already updated and ready to go with this new A-frame design. And they'll be attached to those drives when they get shipped on the 30th. In terms of target industries and applications, um, really for medium voltage, uh, we play in all heavy industry space, and that's no different with the PowerFlex 6000. So, you know, oil and gas, mining and steel, power generation, um, cement, water, wastewater, all these industries are very common for us for medium voltage. And, you know, all the applications you see within these industries are essentially for the PowerFlex 6000 going to be fans, pumps, and compressors. Those are the, the target segment industries and applications for our PowerFlex 6000. So when we look at install base, you know, um, we launched this drive um, about six, seven years ago in Asia Pacific. That's where it was launched first. So that's why you see heavy weight, heavily weighted install base towards Asia Pacific. We then launched it within EMEA, um, which were close to around 200 drives there. In North America, it was launched back in, I want to say 2015, 2014, 2015. Um, and we're at about 88 drives within North America. That's going to be well over 100 by the end of the year um, because we've got a lot of drives that are being built right now. So over 1,000 drives that have been installed globally. So um, we've been working with the product for quite a while now, and really what we're doing is just enhancing it um, in different ways that, that benefit the market and benefit our customers based on the feedback we get. So in terms of manufacturing and support, um, you know, Rockwell, we have four global manufacturing locations globally. We have Cambridge, um, Brazil, Poland, and, and China. We build the PowerFlex 6000 in Cambridge, Poland, and China. Um, so for the Latin or for the North American market, the drives would come through Cambridge. Um, we have 55 field service engineers um, trained on PowerFlex 6000. So within uh, your region in the south, we have a number of dedicated field service engineers who have been trained on 6000 and already already provided um, startups on the 6000 and continue to provide startups, commissioning and technical support. We also have our service hubs, you know, so if the customers do not want to store spare parts on hand, we have our hub in Memphis that we keep spare parts for the 6000 and all of our other MB products as well that can be basically ordered next day um, if the customer didn't have a spare part on hand. Okay, so again, I kind of talked about phase one and two of the launch. So phase one, we're now at AFC. So we're at the time where we're now shipping this reduced footprint A-frame drive. And then we're going to begin working on phase two, which is 6 to 6.9 kV, which will be available um, just about a year away from now, just over a year away. <laughs> Excuse me. So, you know, in summary, um, you know, in terms of the reduced, the reduced footprint A-frame drive, the benefits, you know, maximizing uptime with the 100,000 hour MTBF design rating, um, redundant fan and power cell bypass, all of these. Um, requirements can come into play to driving a more reliable drive, which will um, provide higher uptime uh, for our customers. Um, maximizing installation flexibility, you know, obviously being the best in class footprint um, through some of the ratings and, you know, very, very competitive at the other ratings, you know, we're, we're able to virtually fit this drive into any retrofit space. Um, and a lot of added benefits when installing the drive in, e, in a control house, especially if there's multiple drives going in, you know, there's lots of benefits with the smaller footprint design. Um, and that standard footprint design does include the standard surge arresters and um, commercial applications advantages. So, you know, synchronous transfer capability with, with this drive is still there um, with open or closed transition and being able to offer the stock program for quick delivery or breakdown situations um, gives us advantages to helping out our customers meet their needs um, in, in their application spaces. So that's the end of the presentation. Um, 
Wayne, is there any other questions? Uh, not yet. There was a question earlier on proposal works. Um, so just kind of what, what was proposal works. So for those who may not be familiar, it's, it's a tool that Rockwell makes available to, um, to everyone. You can download off their website and it, it does help you build up a part number. Standard catalog items, basically you build up a part number or build up a catalog item like for push buttons or drives and, and you'll get your um, list prices available there too. And certain documentations available such as CAD files a lot of times are, are, are available um, in some, some documentation. So, um, so if you're not familiar with proposal works, so I want to learn more about it. Uh, reach out to your Reynolds sales team or your Rockwell team. We'll be happy to help you out with that. Um, we'll give a chance for anybody to type in. Um, if you want to ask a question live, uh, I can unmute your line too. So uh, don't have to always type. Um, so we'll give a minute for questions. Um, beyond that, Brad, I'll say uh, we appreciate you taking the time to, to do this for us today. Yeah, no problem. And yeah, if any other questions come through after, um, I'm not sure if you left my contact info, um, but, but I believe you have it. So um, if anyone wants to reach out, you know, my email should be available and uh, I can definitely help answer any other questions. We didn't introduce, uh, but Lance Purnell was uh, also here in the room. So uh, Lance is our area um, power um, manager, power and controls manager, PCAM. So he, he can, uh, so we, have, we do have a, a local resource that's available to help um, as well. All right, well, uh, no questions, Brad, so I guess we'll go ahead and, um, and um, end the session. So we appreciate everyone taking the time to join us and uh, look forward to seeing everybody back again in October. All right, thanks. Okay, thanks a lot, Wayne. Take care. You too.